sinuses. It looks like Catalonia. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a labyrinth of chambers and channels. And what do you think the function may have been? Well, I think the function is to try and keep such a massive head relatively uh, light in weight. Um, the, the complex sinus structures may have things to do with um, humidity control, may have things to do with temperature control and uh, blood supply, particularly blood cooling. But a lot of these sinuses were probably simply air filled. So the exact function of all of this is a bit difficult to say, but most, most large mammals have much more elaborate sinuses. So it's a thing to do with size. And that's where the optic nerve ran through there, up to the eyeball up the top there. So they ran through that channel and up to the top constitutes the, f the front of the face and the upper, the upper jaw, as you can see the teeth rows there, quite worn in this individual. This is where my hand is, is the palate. Um, but if I turn it front on, you get an idea of the fact that this is normally covered by the nasal bones and they have become quite small towards the top of the skull and the front of the face is open. The nasal septum would have sat down in that groove of the vomer there and this is the inside of the nasal chamber with these big vestibules there and the very large opening here which actually looks a bit like an eye socket is actually the fairly substantial passage for the nerves and blood supply to the face and this is the sort of thing that relates to uh, fairly extensive sensory and vascular systems for the front of the face, the lips and the nose and possibly even some sort of proboscis. You can see that the teeth actually wear down extremely um, quickly perhaps um, but certainly to a great extent. The, the teeth are normally bilophodont which has these two transverse crests but the function of the crest which is to increase the efficiency of the chewing uh, very quickly diminishes as the teeth wear so you can see that they're wearing from front to back um, but this is the downturn snout of this animal and in here is where the ligaments that operated the tongue and the throat lower throat um, would have been sighted there's the big nerve channel that uh, fed the nervous supply to the teeth and to the snout and up here, these are the two articulating surfaces. So you've got massive internal or medial muscle sitting in there, and on the outside, a massive mass of the muscle that sat there, and that's what operated the opening and closing of the hinge of the jaw on that surface. To what degree would the jaw be able to open? Um, it's, it looks reasonably um, strong here in the sense that there is not a lot of, um, there's quite often in the jaw there's a, like a little uh, stop on the bone of the skull that inhibits extreme flexure of the jaws. It's very slight in these guys, um, but I'm not sure just exactly how much rotation is allowed because we've got the articular surfaces here are quite fractured and there's only a small amount of the actual bone surface there. There would have been a little cartilage cap sitting on top which would have been the, the uh, bearing, if you like, for the articulation. But um, it's a reasonably big animal. The nerves that operate the front of the face come out there and it's missing its two spoon-shaped incisors at the front. So it on with these two lower incisors. Have you ever had a dream involving Palikastes? <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, um, I sometimes suspect that I only get to reconstruct the ugliest animals that ever lived. And this one was a, certainly a weird one. Fascinating nonetheless. <laughs>